Hey there, welcome to LC Yoga. This is an easy to follow beginner yoga flow that'll help you learn the basics of yoga while building strength and flexibility. So let's get right into it. We're gonna start today in a forward fold. So come to the front of your mat, feet about hip distance apart and bend your knees and start to fold forward. You're just gonna kind of drape your torso over your legs, knees are deeply bent. Now, if it doesn't feel good to come all the way down, you can rest your elbows on your knees, place your hands on your shins, or even your hands on your knees. You're really just looking for a little bit of a stretch in the back of the legs, but we're not warmed up yet, so we're not trying too hard to do that. So just kind of start to let the head and shoulders get heavy. And as you do that, turn your tailbone up toward the sky. Let that be what starts to lengthen the legs. And then let the breath start to get deep as you relax the neck and just let your head hang there like a big old coconut. Big deep breaths. And start to feel a nice stretch in the back of the legs. Those bent knees are keeping your back nice and comfortable. Now we'll start to move. So start to lift the torso about halfway up. And again, your hands can be on your shins here. Then we're gonna step the left foot back into a lunge and lower the knee down. Place your hands on your front thigh and come on up into a low lunge. And here we're just gonna start to open the front body. So we're opening that left hip. So press that hip forward and that lengthens the lower back. If you feel any crunching in the, in the lower back, kind of come up out of the lunge a little bit. You don't have to go super deep here. And you can keep your hands on your front thigh, press your toes into the mat, and press your left hip forward from that. And you can sink down as low as you want. I'm not trying to to get the, the deepest lunge here, just a nice stretch. Breathe into that a couple more times. You can lift your arms up if that feels good. Low lunge, Anjani Asana. Then we're gonna place our hands on the floor and, and next to the front foot, plant the hands and then step back into a downward dog. Do that by coming back into an upside down V shape. And again, your knees can be bent here. Press your fingertips into the ground. That'll keep you from slipping forward. So press your fingertips. Heels can be up, especially at the start of class here, but they may always stay up. It's more important to bend your knees and again, turn that tailbone up toward the sky. Downward dog. Big breath here. And then lift your right foot up toward the sky. Let it go as high as it wants to. And then step it forward into a lunge. And we're gonna come back into that low lunge. So drop your back knee down, bring your hands to your front thigh and come on up. And press that left hip forward. This time you might wanna lift your arms up if you didn't last time. If not, hands can be on the front thigh, press that hip forward, deep breath in here, just a little baby back bend. <sighs> Let it out through an open mouth. <sighs> Bring the hands next to the front foot again, lift that back knee, and then step back to the front of the mat. Get long, so reach the crown of the head forward, hands to the shins, and then fold it in again. Keep those knees bent as bent as they need to be, turn the tailbone up. Big breath in through the nose and let it out. Lift up halfway again, and this time we're gonna step back with the right foot and lower the knee down. Hands to the front thigh, come on up, low lunge on this side, and press that right hip forward this time. Pressing the toes into the ground behind you and let your chest kind of rise up out of that. What you're looking for is a sort of a nice stretch in the front body, 
without crunching the lower back. And when you press your hip forward, that's how you keep the lower back long. But if that doesn't feel good, again, lift up out of it using the front foot as a break. Arms can stay down or up. Press the chest up. Hello sky, whether you can see it or not. Deep breath in. And then bring the hands down by the front foot, plant the hands and we'll step it back, downward dog. Now feel free to move in downward dog. You can press one heel down and then the other. It's bending each knee one at a time and breathing into the back of the more straight leg. Press those fingertips into the ground. You can stay still here, just big breaths, stretching the whole back body. And let your shoulders drop away from the ears. So as you press your hands into the ground, shoulders sort of lift up and away from your ears. Now on your next inhale, you're gonna plant that right foot, lift your left foot up toward the sky. As high or as low as it wants to go, and then step it forward into a lunge. And we'll come back into our Anjani Asana, hands to the front thigh, pressing the right hip forward. Maybe the arms float up. Press those toes into the ground back there. Lift it up. And you're undoing all that sitting we do all the time. Reach it up. And then bring the hands down by the front foot, lift that back knee, and come on back to the front of the mat. Long spine as you're gonna prepare to fold and then fold it in, knees bent. They might be getting a little straighter by this time, they might not, well it's okay. Over time, you'll get that flexibility. There's nothing that can rush it. It's only time, time and practice. So this time bend deeply into your knees and come on up to stand with a flat back. So then reaching your arms out to the side, come on up to stand, reach up, get tall, and bring the hands in prayer in front of the heart. And just kind of check in, how you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Let's do some more of that. So we're gonna reach the arms out to the side and up, take a big breath in, get tall, side waist is long. And then as you exhale, fold it forward. Come on back down. Lifting halfway, reach the crown of the head forward. Again, hands can be on the feet, the shins, or the floor. And then step your left foot back into a lunge. And this time we're gonna keep our knee up. Press the hands into the front thigh and come on up into a high lunge. Again, pressing the left hip forward. And as you work towards straightening that back knee, you'll notice that kind of deepens the stretch that we were doing with a low lunge. So press that hip forward, chest kind of going up away from those back toes and use those back toes to press it, press it forward. Arms can float up. Maybe cactus arms, bend the elbows. It's a nice shoulder stretch in there. Big breath in. And then bring the hands down by the front foot and back to downward dog. And doing downward dog again and again, we're deepening the stretch each time. So again, feel free to move around, bending one knee, then the other. Maybe rocking the hips side to side, kind of get the side waist involved. Press those fingers down, almost lifting the center of the hand. And that gives you that nice grip that keeps you from slipping. Well, this time we're gonna lift the left foot up, let it float up toward the sky, step forward into a lunge. Keep that back knee up, press the hands into the front thigh, and come on up. High lunge on the left side. 
pressing that hip forward, feel a nice opening in the psoas, the front of the hip flexor. Maybe the arms come up. Pressing the chest up and away from back toes. I like to cactus on my arms here. Shoulder stretch. Big breath in. And then bring the hands down by the front foot. Step it forward. Inhaling to get long. Exhaling to fold. Then into the knees, flat back, coming up to stand, reaching the arms out to the side and up, moving in slow motion, getting tall. Bring the palms together, hands in prayer in front of the heart. And here in standing, just standing is a yoga pose too, when you do it well. So find your feet. You can leave your hands there in prayer, maybe bring them down by your sides, palms forward. And this is mountain pose. But press all four corners of your feet into the ground, bend the knees a little bit, and stand strong up out of that. And then we'll do a nice standing pose flow. So we're gonna sweep the arms out to the side and up. Deep breath in. And as you exhale, fold it forward. Inhale, get long, crown of the head reaches forward. Step back with your left foot, and this time we're gonna lower the back heel. So your back foot is somewhere around a 45 degree angle, but you've gotta find out what's comfortable for your ankle. Come on up, pressing your hands into your front thigh. And now we've got that back foot down, this is warrior one, as we reach the arms up toward the sky. Now your front thigh can be parallel to the earth, that looks great in photos, but we're not doing photos right now, so that thigh can be anywhere, feels comfortable. Reaching the arms up, left hip pressing forward just like we did in the lunge, warrior one. And now we're gonna open up into warrior two, we're gonna do that by turning the hips toward the left. So that opens up and our back foot goes parallel to the back of the mat. Right thigh presses out toward the right. So those thighs are sort of reaching away from each other. The arms float out into a T shape. Warrior two. Tailbone is tucked so we're not sticking the butt out. Deep breath in and a deep breath out. That front thigh is getting a little bit warm. That's good, that's what we want. So now we're gonna straighten that front leg and transition into triangle pose. And we do that by shifting the hips back toward the back of the mat and that tilts the pelvis forward. Now keep that front knee bent for a minute. Tilting the pelvis forward and place your right hand on your shin. You may need to widen your stance a little. And as you start to straighten that front knee, you're gonna to start to reach your left arm up toward the sky. And what you don't want is to round like this. We're not trying to, to do a side bend here. We wanna tilt the pelvis, shifting the hips back toward the back of the mat. Right hand down, left arm up, maybe looking up toward that left thumb. That's triangle pose. Now your hand can stay on your shin it can go down to your foot or even the floor, depending on how flexible you're feeling. Maybe keep that knee bent. You gotta find the triangle pose that works for you. One more big breath here. And then as you exhale, start to turn towards your front foot and we're gonna lift the back heel, coming into a low lunge, lower the back knee down. Place your left hand on the ground and then reach your right arm up, so you're twisting toward the right. Open and breathe. This is one of my favorites. You can leave your left knee on the ground back there, or you can lift it up if you want a little more fire in this one. Open those hips. If that feels like too much, 
Place that knee back on the ground. And just breathe into that. And then bring that hand down to the ground so your hands are around that front foot. Lift your back knee, step back to the front of the mat. Inhaling to get long, exhaling to fold. And just notice how different you feel in forward fold now than you did at the beginning of class. Knees can still be as deeply bent as they need to be here. Inhale one more time, getting long in the spine. And as you exhale, step that right foot back into a lunge. Lower the back heel down. And then press your hands into that front thigh. Come on up and lift the arms up. Warrior one on this side. Pressing the right hip forward. Press the chest up and away from the back foot. And then we're going to open up into warrior two. So start to turn toward the right, opening the hips up. Let that back foot go a little bit more parallel to the back of the mat. Press your left knee out toward the left. Arms float out into a T shape. Warrior two, gaze out over your left middle finger. Crown of the head reaching away from the tailbone. Let that front thigh get nice and warmed up. If it feels like too much, taking a little break, come up out of it and then lower back in. And then come up, start straightening that front knee and we'll take triangle pose on this side. So bend the knee a little bit so that you can start to tilt the pelvis forward. And I always like to think of it as, as my front knee straightens, my, my back hip, so this time my right hip is going toward the back of the mat. So I'm just sort of tilting this way like a robot. Like there's no bending of the waist here. It's just tilting. Left hand down, right arm up. And you know you've got it because your side waist is flat here. It's not rounded, right? It's flat. Reach the, the right arm up, leaving that front knee bent if it needs to be. The way to build flexibility is in small increments and you want to do it without pain. So we're not trying to just form a shape. We're trying to feel what the shape needs to be in our own body. Press that left hand down, reach your right arm up. And at the same time, the crown of the head is reaching away from the tailbone. So you're nice and long in all directions. One more big breath here. And then start to turn toward your front leg, bending that knee and then lower your back knee down. Place your right hand on the floor and reach your left arm up. You drop the hips down here. Maybe adding a little baby back bend, pressing the chest forward, digging those back toes into the ground. You can lift that back knee if you want a little bit more fire. And as you do that, press down with your right hand to lift up out of your left. So you're lifting up out of that shoulder. One more big breath here. And then as you exhale, lower that knee. If you brought it up, turn toward your front foot. And we're just going to step both knees together and then come on back into a child's pose. So hips to heels, knees can be together or apart. And rest the forehead, reaching the arms forward. If the head doesn't come all the way to the ground, no problem. You might want to stack the fists. Rest the forehead there, or maybe grab a pillow. We're not gonna be here too long. I'm stretching the back of the body a little bit and just sinking down. And 
Then come on up to hands and knees, walk the knees forward. Bring the hips down to the ground and let the, the legs go out in front of you. A couple more stretches and we'll wrap it up. So press your heels into the ground and then scoot your hips back and away from that. We're gonna make a seated forward fold. Leave the knees as bent as they need to be. So you might be starting to, to spot a theme by now. We like to leave the knees bent and scoot the hips away from that in forward folds and doing that you keep the back nice and long press your chest forward so in a lot of yoga classes and a lot of pictures of people stretching it looks like they're just getting their nose down to their shin but you can pull your back doing that it doesn't feel good so instead press your chest forward and let your hips go away from that you're actually going front to back if you're doing that with me, you're probably feeling that good stretch in the back of the legs. Feels awesome. And that's how you want it to be. You always want it, a yoga pose to feel amazing. If it doesn't, find your adjustments. So a couple more big breaths here. Leaving the knees bent if they need to be. Walk the hands up, scoot the hips forward a little bit, roll down onto your back. Let the feet go about the width of the mat, feet just flop open, hands flop open, palms to the sky, maybe snuggle the shoulders under for Shavasana. A lot of times in modern yoga we skip this part, but I believe this to be the most important part of practice. This is where the body begins to integrate what it's learned. And not only that, you teach yourself, your subconscious mind, how to relax. So let everything sink into the floor. If you feel any muscles gripping, let them go. Get heavy. Take another about 30 seconds to give yourself this little gift, this moment of relaxation. Now you can stay here as long as you like, but when you're ready, start to bend into the knees and bring the bottoms of the feet to the floor. And draw the knees in toward the chest. Maybe grab your shins, pull the knees in. Just give a little squeeze. And then make your way on up to sit. You can rock on up, maybe roll over to one side. Press up slowly, take it easy on yourself. Find a comfortable seat and we'll just close it out. So you can sit in simple cross-legged. I sit in half lotus because it's more comfortable on my knee than sitting like that. But not required. That can tweak some people's knees, so don't bother. It doesn't feel good. Bring the backs of the hands to the knees, palms open, close the eyes. Let the crown of the head go up away from your sit bones. Just close it out with a little gratitude. So thank yourself for taking the time to step on your mat today. Thank your body for letting you do so. And 
Thank your breath for leading the way. Namaste. Thanks for joining me. If you enjoyed today's class, come find me over on lcyoga.com. There you'll find all kinds of content that doesn't exist here on YouTube. With a 30-day free trial, you'll find commercial-free, complete beginner series, intermediate flows, workshops, at-home retreats, challenges, lots of stuff to help you grow and expand your practice. Start your 30-day free trial at lcyoga.com and I'll see you there.